What's up? What it do? Time for another episode, am I? Yeah. With, of the Intellectual Stew with yours truly, James Kirkland. And we are having another episode of Tuesday Flow. And on tonight, I have a very, very special guest who is going to uh, come in and share her story, share a little bit of her testimony. And we're going to talk for a little while and see what kind of uh, variables we can come up with what kind of, kind of conclusions and outcomes I want to bring her in and hopefully you all will come on in and you will share the thread let me bring her in what's up Sansa Ray? hey you like my music I like it jazz music <laughs> that's original so I can play it through I can play it through YouTube I don't have to worry about that you gotta worry my about no copyright way. no I don't have to worry about no copyright because I've had I've been, I've been uh, struck for copyright enough times I don't need no more <laughs> but I don't read no rules or nothing like that so I just me neither <laughs> for forgiveness later on <laughs> that's how i do it but what's up what's up how are you i'm pretty good actually only I'm, pretty I'm, good yeah only pretty good because i'm cleaning out my makeup thing you know that's what uh-huh. i've been doing so if you hear like crunchy sounds or something it's me organizing makeup <laughs> it's not eating chips <laughs> no it's not me eating chips or scratching uh, okay, my I butt don't... or nothing <laughs> No, don't scratch it, but on, on the video, we, this is live and recorded, so yes. don't scratch it on the show, okay? But I am so excited uh, for you to be on the Intellectual Stew. I have two shows. I have a Monday Night Live show and I have a Tuesday show. Tuesday show is called Tuesday Flow, and uh, on the flow, the flow is an acronym for Faith, Leadership, Organizations, mm-hmm. and Witnesses. Uh, you fall under the category, of course, of witnesses uh, because you're going to share. A portion of some of the things that you've gone through and uh and uh i feel like your experiences will be instrumental in helping a lot of people um uh, let me tell you how i became acquainted with you um i was watching one of your videos on TikTok. hey what's up jackie wilson uh i was watching one of your videos listen if y'all coming in right now i have the real sansa ray on the show so y'all need to tag this i mean y'all need to share this tag Please. four or five people and let's get some people in here because she's uh she wants to tell I'm, I'm 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 telling y'all how it's going how we met okay so I on my other show I hold men accountable I hold women accountable because I don't think it's women are flawed I don't think it's just men who are flawed I think people are flawed and I think as long as we pl- we practice point the finger writers where we're pointing the finger <laughs> at the other sex we'll never really come to any outcomes or any resolution right. But when I heard you, I was like, whoa, what in the world? Is she, did she really just say that? And I was like amazed. And I played it on my wall. Uh, I think eventually you even saw me tag, uh, do one of the videos. And that's how you, we yeah. came, and, uh, came to this. But uh, let, me, let, me, let me see if I can, hold on a second. Let me see if I can do this. I'm trying to see if I can pull this up. But this is the one. Oh, the video. Got me. This is the one that got me. Hold on. Let me see if I can pull it up. I'm not, I'm not real good at technology. I told you that. So charge it to my head, not to my heart. <laughs> I did it wrong. All right, here we go. Here we go. You know, collective delusion is running rapid. <laughs> um, I got my confirmation yesterday when I saw that femininity coaching April Mason matchmaking self oh for dating academy. 
I don't know what rock I've been under, but I thought he was it. <laughs> why is understandable. She said, the majority that come to me have unrealistic expectations, the selfishness, fake everything, think they should be chosen because they have a vagina and good looks, mm. the entitlement, just me not knowing the difference between being a woman and a wise woman and will fight you to be strong, not knowing how to be versus do, thinking being a feminine woman is weak or pick me, whatever it is, placing the blame and not taking responsibility or accountability for the choices they made in men, being disagreeable, defensive, argumentative about everything, always finding something to nitpick. The black female okay, collective. Well, you didn't even see. It was so much more to that. Like, oh. first of all, let me just get this out of the way. April Mason is like, she's a little bit perturbed about me right now because you got you know who April Mason is, right? I do. You, I do. You know who April Mason is, so. I think maybe a month or so after I did that clip, because that clip went viral, it was all over social media. And mm -hmm. she was deciding, you know, basically that she wanted to quit and that <laughs> femininity was this one way women should be. Mm -hmm. And I was like, femininity is basically <sighs> defined by whatever women want to define it as and it's more than one definition of it and mm -hmm. i felt like april mason was encouraging women and putting a lot of pressure on women to be one kind of way and that way was what's appealing to men mm. instead of who we want to be as women and after i said that she kind of blocked me she was done with me <laughs> she was done because i'm like you can't teach everybody how to be april you know what I mean? No. Like, April is April. You know, she's gorgeous. She's, you know, she's her. Mm -hmm. But to teach everybody else to try to be like her, it puts a lot of pressure on us thinking that the, the epitome of femininity is April Mason when it's so many different types of femininity. So, so, and, how, so, so you say there are many types of femininity. Yeah, yeah. it's different types. And they're all positive. There's some positive ones and there's some negative types. Okay. You know, you got dark femininity out there. You know, some women are, are, are dark, and a lot of men might classify that dark masculinity, I mean, uh, that dark femininity as masculinity. Okay. You know, I think, like, I, my daughter loves dark masculinity because she feels like strength is a part of a woman. You know, mm -hmm. not all of us sh show our strength in the same way. We have different types of ways that we show it. Mm -hmm. But um, dark femininity is, is, I don't like the term dark being used but she likes the term dark being used, mm -hmm. you know? So it's so each woman is different. It doesn't make her any less of a woman or female. She's mm -hmm. still feminine, but she likes the concept of dark femininity, gotcha. which is basically just strength. Gotcha. And, and that's, that's a large uh, portion of what people, I think that, uh, that, that kind of deepens the divide between men and women because of now that you've in introduced this paradigm, of the different types of femininity because i think because i'm I, I probably would have thought there's only one way of femininity because i I was raised my mama was very my, my my stepmother raised me but my stepmother was very ladylike you know what i'm saying and she taught me that mm -hmm. there was a difference between a woman how a woman acted and how a lady mm -hmm. acted you know what i mean that you know so when i start thinking that's of elegance. Femin that's uh, elegance okay elegance, that's, that's, and, elegance and sensuality and grace and just you know grace. just you know they didn't yeah. cuss you know just you know yeah. certain things just that w certain way women that ladies acted yeah. when i was growing up that women didn't and i mm -hmm. think that with that kind of uh bar being set you know what i'm saying because mm -hmm. because whether we know it or not we're always subliminally setting bars you know what i'm saying we you know right. it, it takes 21 days to create a new habit right uh, we, we, it's, it, you know, a new normal can be created in a moment, but when you had these bars that have been set for so long, and we and we thought this is the certain way femininity ought to look, and then for you to come with that video, and I'm sitting there like, you know, oh man, I mean, I didn't know you had all, I didn't know you had sarcasm off up in there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I, know you had sarcasm all up in there, but uh, I hear you now. I feel you. But that's what attracted me to the real Sansa Ray. That's why you're here because I love what you were saying. It was the method. It was the message. You know what I'm saying? And you were talking to women. You weren't talking to men. You were talking to women. Yeah. I, I can't, 
well, I get it from both ends because I'm like you. I'm like the person that wants men and women to unify. And I understand that everybody is part of the problem. Everybody has to catch up with modern living and stop expecting traditional things. You evolve with time. Like people who still want traditional marriages and old ways of women being a certain way. It's like you have to understand we're not using rotary phones. We're not horse and carriage out here. You know what I mean? Like we don't we can use a remote now. We can stream. We don't have to walk up to the television and change to the 12 channels that we had <laughs> or the cable box that we had when we were younger. Life is different. It, and because we have access to so many different people and so many different things, we have to evolve as people. That means our marriages, our you know rules or boundaries or whatever it is that we you know want to put in marriages and relationships has to evolve with it. So when people try to, which also causes division, try to pin modern women against traditional women and using femininity as the tool to do that, it bothers me because mm -hmm. there is modern day femininity and that's that very different it's not that the same makes yeah. that makes sense that makes sense and, and y'all those that don't know and hey Catherine, how are you jackie ashley how are you all listen up sansa ray is a a very she's very uh well known social on the social media scene she has over two hundred and sixty thousand youtube me i mean TikTok followers mm -hmm. she has almost ten thousand youtube followers you know she's very well known on the social Hold media up. Oh, 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 I have 45,000 subscribers on YouTube. My Let's bad. I looked at the wrong right. thing. I was looking at the wrong video. Right. I was, <laughs> no, hey, hey, I stand no. corrected, but, but I'm standing on size 12, so I'm cool with that. But uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I, no, at the I, wrong, saw, no, I think I looked at the video or something, or something wrong. I, I, I saw that Facebook. wrong. Facebook. No, Facebook. I really suck at followers. Like, I don't have a lot of followers on Facebook. Like, I got like 6.5 followers on Facebook. That's not a lot of followers for me to have been on Facebook as long as I have. But well, I haven't do you done work what it? you're doing. Huh? Okay, but do you work at? I mean, do you like you just said you? But you're not doing what I'm doing, though. Well, said. there's this. Okay, people who are like popular on Facebook, they gave me the code, and I'm gonna tell you what the code is or how they get gonna, more followers. I'm write notes. Let me take down notes. All right, do it. and this okay. is what I've been doing, and it's been working. Okay. So you know how the United States is broken into three? Not the United States, but the world is broken into tiers, mm -hmm. country-wise, and so in order to get more followers you have to pay for advertising five dollars a day in tier three countries tier three countries really? not not the united states not the you know the, where everybody is like big on technology and stuff but the states i mean the countries where technology is just now starting to be a thing oh wow and so I pay five dollars a day for to promote my Facebook page, and each week I get a, a thousand new followers on Facebook. Oh wow! And you I just, just started doing that. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it worked. Like I, when they told me, I was like, "Oh!" And then once you get ten thousand followers on Facebook, then you start getting paid for your, you know, like live streams and stuff like that. So that's what I'm aiming towards. You'll be there. Ten. Free game, y'all. She just gave us some free game. <laughs> Take some free game. Take <laughs> free game. So listen, you all. This then this is the tripped out part. Cause I'm gonna be honest. When I when I first heard this video, because oh. of the type of conversations we have on our Monday night show, I was like, I need her to come on and talk to women. You know, so I need her, I need oh. to get her perspective on there. I need to get this. And then, but then when we started communicating after, because I mean, I really had never thought about reaching out to you or anything of the sort. I didn't read, I didn't, I didn't think about that. But then when you when I shared one of your videos and then you liked it, then I said, okay, you know, then I can, yeah. we started chatting a little bit then. And then we ended up in a conversation and I, I learned a lesson. You taught me a good lesson. I appreciate you for that lesson. That's a, we're going to keep that lesson between us. But, uh, but then after that lesson was over with, she said, you know what, what are you trying to do? And I told her and she said, I'll tell you what, I'll do this. And we said, we've been talking for about three or four weeks now. And I appreciate that. Hey, Renita, how you doing? And so we, and now, and, 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 so you told me when I asked to interview you, you told me to go and do some research. You said, make sure you that you did that. not do. I did some. <laughs> Hold on. Let me set it up a little bit more. Hold on. <laughs> so she said, do some research. She said, y'all need y'all. She said, James, go and do some research. Make sure this is what you want to do. I'm like, why? I'm like, why would she say that? I'm looking at all her messages. I'm watching these videos and 
everything is empowerment for women and you know and they're good messages and why would a dude be upset about that because it's women talking to women i ain't gonna be why am i if i see two women in an argument i'm not gonna go walk and hey what y'all arguing for i'm just not gonna do that that's what i got i'm a man my daddy raised right. me so i don't do that kind of stuff i'm gonna let y'all have y'all conversation i'm gonna go find me a dude to, that's why we argue with women sansa ray i don't yes. argue with nobody i can't fight if right. We, yeah, if we can't fight in a minute when we get through arguing, then I don't want to argue with you. So you know, so I, don't, so I don't get in those. So why? So but then in the, when I started doing a little research, and then well, first you sent me a clip of somebody who interviewed you who will go nameless. I won't say that individual's name, mm -hmm. but I saw no, the interview. I'm interview, like, he didn't interview me. No, no, he, he interviewed, interviewed this other dude. We're talking about. We'll get into the interview. Yeah. We'll get into the minute. And I'm listening to them trying to, they were trying to drag. I mean, they were just like talk. I'm like, why would two men talk about women like that? A woman like that. I mean, and just talking bad. Y'all can do, do your own research. I'm not going to help yeah. you on that one. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so then you like, are you, then I saw when I called you back, you were like, well, I texted you back. You were like, do you still want to do it? I'm like, of course. So and I'm like, let me Google her some more. Because this, this <laughs> must be really bad if she's telling me this stuff. So I Googled it again. Then I'm hearing these dudes with these loud voices and they talking crazy and they talking loud. And, mm. you know, and I'm just and they're talking, they're just saying all these things, negative things about you and all these kind of things. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> she's talking. Yeah. But then she'll tell you that I learned these things yeah. or she'll say that I'm telling you, I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> she'll say things of that nature. So. Why would you penalize a person for something? So I'm going to tell you what. Do me a favor. Tell us in your words why you became such a target on social media. What happened? Oh, it's, it's all my fault. It's, okay. I take full accountability. Okay. I take full accountability. So okay. in 2018, like I started my YouTube channel. Okay. And no, in 2008, where I get 2018. In 2008, I started my YouTube channel. And I started mm -hmm. doing videos, giving men advice about relationships, mm -hmm. okay? And I would tell men the things that women didn't like about men. So I was a dating coach. And because I saw this movement of men online who didn't necessarily like women of color, I said, you know what, I'm going to try to do some collaborations with men of color so people can understand I'm not your enemy. I'm just a woman that wants people to unify. And that is one of the biggest mistakes I ever made was trying to collaborate on YouTube with men who already had an agenda that was focused on destroying women of color. Mm. And <laughs> me being foolish, <laughs> I ran into this one. I didn't run into him. He reached out to me and he was trying to like holler. Okay? okay. Initially. And I was in a relationship. So I kept saying, nah, nah, nah. But he was like a men's rights activist, a radio personality that it was extremely popular during this time. I think he was, I don't know if he was in Arizona. I can't remember, but he was on the West coast and he was known for how much he could not stand black women. But mm. I did not know that. I just see him as a guy that was trying to holler at me on Facebook. And I was just like, I'm good. And I did that for a year. He just kept trying to holler for a whole year, just sending me messages and I just kept saying no. And then one day, because I was a lingerie model at the time. So I was, I just finished modeling. And I just started my YouTube channel. I was basically like transitioning from being a lingerie model to doing YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. And as I was um, doing that transition, he asked me to come on to his show, just kind of how like we doing right now. Gotcha. And I said, okay, right? Not knowing that he, he had this following of men that could not stand women of color. So he basically tells his audience, I'm going to have this girl come on to my show and I'm going to interview her. And apparently mm -hmm. he didn't say it in the nicest way. So some of his audience reached out to me and said, Hey, you know, this guy, he doesn't like black women. You don't need to go on to his show. Don't okay. he, he made this terrible video about you. He said, you was going to come on the show. Please do not do this. So I reached out to him 
And I asked him, I said, did you tell your audience that you was inviting me onto the show? And he said, yeah. And I was like, did you say like some nasty things about me? And he was like, yeah, B word. I was just telling you to tell him the truth about you. And this he is called you, I, he called you a B. Yeah. He basically was like, yeah. <laughs> Cause he don't, he, I guess he just assumed I had an attitude. Cause you, when you read it, you don't necessarily know if somebody's angry with you. Cause you yeah, just read you don't call nobody a B though. I mean, I don't but, how mad you? Yeah, I got you. But, but he don't like black women. You see what I'm saying? It, especially you. ones that have been rejecting him all year. <laughs> But <laughs> he was just like, and I and I said, I bowed out gracefully. I said, listen, thank you for the invitation, but I'm gonna have to decline this because I, I can't do this. I can't. I don't see myself, you know, this being good for me. And from that point on, he tormented me. Wow. He made video after video after video, and then I, instead of ignoring it, not understanding what I was doing, I started making videos back. Oh, so wow. we're going back and forth. We're back and forth. We're back and forth. I'm defending myself. He's saying this. He's doing this. The stalking starts. He's putting out my phone number. He's saying all this negative stuff about my daughter. He's making up rumors and stuff. Back and forth. Back and forth. And we did this for years. And so it created like this, I don't know, cloud that follows me everywhere I go all over the internet of like just a group of men who stalk and harass me. And it got so bad when I got pregnant with my son. Wow. And I didn't get pregnant with my son until 2018. But that's a whole nother story. Mm, yeah. When well, you ready yeah. for that story, you can talk about that. But so, that was, so, so hold on. So, <laughs> so, so this guy uh, tries to holler at you. Yeah. You don't give him any play. I'm, I'm going to give the, uh, the uh, South Side Atlanta version. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we're gonna get there. Uh, he tries to holler at you. He shoots his shot. I guess that's how the young folks say it. He shoots his shot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. he misses when he shoots over his shot and over. Over, over and over and again. Over so, over. okay, let's have an interview. Let's talk about it. So, but y'all think y'all on the same page. You're ready to collaborate, but because yeah, you didn't cohabit, yeah, but he, but because you didn't cohabitate, he tried to incapacitate. I mean, let me use my little Mike, my little, I mean, my little Jesse Jackson moment or whatever. <laughs> What? So he's because you wasn't ready to give him no play. He's gonna try to pour. I mean, let me stop on it. But uh, he he's gonna come for you like for what? He did. Was he raised with a daddy? No. I'm sorry. Okay, that makes a difference. That no, makes and he had a terrible relationship with his mother. And I noticed a pattern with a lot of the men who were attacking me. He he was basically the leader of men who had absent fathers and bad relationships with their mothers. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't realize it was that many men that had that issue until yeah. that. Yeah. And and that and you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something and I want you to hear me on this. Uh because there there are a lot there's a large segment of men because when women have to when some women have to be single mothers of course, right? And they have to be punisher and nurturer at the same time. You know, some, sometimes sometimes mm -hmm. that message is mixed, right? And right. you have a lot of boys that got to take it for 18 years. You know what I'm saying? Because you ain't going to disrespect. You ain't going to fight back. You know what I'm saying? But you got to take it. And you hear, yeah, 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 you know, all, this, all your life. And then all of a sudden, you get grown. And you, I, I remember one time I was at Walmart. And this little girl, she's about 21, 22. She had a little three-year-old. She was jerking them sons away. She just jerking them all around. <laughs> just do that. The boy wasn't doing nothing but touching candy. What do three-year-old babies do? They touch candy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You just take it. But she's jerking them, jerking. Don't do this. Don't. I said, sweetheart, stop doing that boy like that. She said, why? This is my, no, this is my son. You don't tell me how the hell of my son. This is my son. I said, but sweetheart, this is the problem. I said, he'll take it from you now because he has to. But when he gets older and everybody else who tries to give it to him and he ain't got to take it no more, he's going to go upside his head and he's going to see you every time. Mm -hmm. I said, so you need to be careful. So there's a lot, my point is there's a large segment of society, right, that just don't want to hear it. I mean, I heard somebody, I heard a person's voice in my life that I just, when I got old, I just didn't really want to hear. But I, but I had enough nurturing and love of me to differentiate, mm -hmm. you know, you know, what's really hurt me and what's not really, you understand what I'm saying? But so when you got these little boys that have never been raised properly, you know, that resent women now that are confused about that type, that they don't understand the, uh, they, they don't understand authority and all those types of things. I think they're looking for a leader. And if, well, if they, you yeah. got, and then yeah. when they look for a leader, and you get somebody to validate your foolery. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and they validate. Because the videos I heard of them talking about you, I couldn't listen to the whole thing. You can't. 
you got to be a part of that type of, you got to have like that negative mindset to be able to stomach it. You got to have that level of ignorance to be able to stomach it. But what you know, just as well as I do, once you reach a certain level of intellect, oh, yeah. you cannot stomach that stuff no more because it just sounds yeah. ignorant. It sounds too stupid to you. But yeah, my, my biggest concern right now is my son becoming that because I'm a single mother. But I want people to understand something about single mothers. There's a difference between high-end single mothers and lower-energy baby mamas. There are women out there who can raise men into being good people. I can't teach my son how to be a man, but I can teach my son how to be a good person. Mm -hmm. I, I can teach him how to have a good character. You know, okay. those are the things that, that I feel like people think women can't do once a man excuses himself. No, I still know how to parent. I don't suddenly forget that simply because his father decided to be absent. You know what I mean? No, no. I mean, I, I don't. I don't think. And people are saying that that's utterly stupid. Uh, uh, Catherine agrees with you. She says she had a man who didn't have a good relationship with their mother, yeah. and overall, he didn't like or respect women at the end of the day. And I, and that's that's the problem with a lot of these little boys. And that's why I try yeah. to talk to toxic toxic parents. You know, be careful because right. the seeds you're sowing now, they go. If you if you plant a seed, it's gonna come up. It's gonna come up. It so is. It's gonna come up. Okay, but let's go farther with this conversation. Let's go farther because you, like you said, you you said that you deserved it. You said that some of the backlash. We're well not. I don't know if "deserved" is the right word, but I mean, you, it's not that I deserved all of it because it got bad. It got so bad. Like I said, when I got pregnant with my son, okay. um, it got to the point where people were <sighs> harassing my family. Um, calling my coworkers, trying to interview anyone that I did, trying to get my uh, family members kicked out of their homes and rental properties, any type of investment person or real estate person I was talking to, they reach out to their person. Any type of business venture that I was trying to do, they find that person and say something negative to that person, tell them I was a scam artist or a fraud. And it just was getting out of hand. You know, it, I, I started to see that these people were trying to destroy me in real life. Mm -hmm. Not just online, like not just my online reputation. And so they were sending like SWAT to my house. They sent CPS to my house to take my children. They they were really just doing too much, sending deliveries, pest control, plumbers, all types of just mess. And it was just disturbing my family, like my, my kids, my mom, anybody that was around me. It was just disturbing them. And why? I mean, what, what, why? Why were you a target? Why? I mean, because. What, what did you because I had gone back and forth with their leader, okay, their cult leader, for so long, now it became these men, the only power that they have is the power that they feel like they have on the internet. So they yes. use the internet power to try to destroy real life. I mean, some people are just nefarious. Some mm -hmm. people are just in that state. Hurt people hurt people. So mm -hmm. I'm this person who basically is defending themselves against a man who's trying to make me his poster child or his meme, you know, muse for cruel content because I'm black and because I'm female and because I'm a single mother and because I'm overweight, I'm a hair-hatted hooligan who wears wigs and makeup and, he you know, all of stuff. he did say some stuff, said but that's how he talks about all women. So I'm not exempt. It's not like... Yeah. I'm just the only woman he does it to. He does it to black women too, and so. So, so let me, me say this. Women. Let me say this, and then I'm going. And I'm not. I'm, I got. I just got a text message that said, "Let you talk." So I'm gonna let you. Let me. Let me make sure I let you talk. But let me. Most. You know. Most guns. Right. Their gun. Guns are good. I mean, they are. I mean, well, they have their purpose. Right. I'm, I, I don't want to say good. I, I'm. I'm setting this up a wrong way. Hold up. Let me say. Guns are guns. <laughs> let me just say that. Guns are guns. I'm not gonna say good. Guns. I just guns are guns. Guns. Hold on, I got, I got a point. I got a gun. so okay. if a person points a gun at you, right, uh -huh. and it doesn't have a bullet in it, it's just a gun. It's just an inanimate object. Okay, right. I, okay. But if there's a bullet in that gun, and right, right, and if I handed you a gun, now unless you pistol whoop me, and I, you know, but you can't pistol whoop me from over there. We got to be close up, <laughs> right? So the internet, they can't pistol whoop you through the internet. That ain't gonna right. Happen. That ain't gonna happen. Right. So. Did you, because I heard you a minute ago say that you <laughs> earned I, some of it. Yeah. I feel did like. You, did you give them any ammunition to put in their gun to shoot you or to try to, try to kill you? You talking about initially? No. Uh, yeah, eventually. But, 
eventually. eventually. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. See, let me tell you something about me being a woman. Okay. All right. I'm only gonna take so much. Okay. I mean, I'm nice until I'm not. You feel what I'm saying? Like I can't let all of these people just keep coming at me, coming at me, coming at me, and ignore it. Gotcha. So I had to start fighting back equally. Okay. So all of the people that were stalking me, this is what I would do. All the people that were stalking me, you have to remember, I also had people who were like my um, supporters. Okay. So they send me these people's information. They're like, oh, I found your stalker. <laughs> <laughs> that stalker you had, <laughs> this is their home address, their pictures, wow. the truth about who they are. So I created this blog. It was called Read My Mind. Okay. And in Read My Mind, I put up all of the information that I got about my gotcha. stalkers on that blog. Gotcha. <laughs> Pissed off, were they? <laughs> okay, Pissed off. But I feel like the reason why a lot of people do what they do on the internet is because they feel like they won't get any type of consequences. Mm -hmm. And so because I was going to like the police and the FBI and they weren't taking me seriously, because can you imagine going to the police station and being like, listen, I'm being harassed and stalked by my own race of man because of my race. They're looking at you like you're crazy. OK, <laughs> like, what did you mean? Like, why are they doing this to you? What did you do? You know, and I'm like, no, nah, I didn't do anything. Just be black. You know what I mean? Like a female. And that wasn't working. So I had to try to find my own way of dealing with it. And mm -hmm. during that time, to me, it was fighting big. Gotcha. And gotcha. that's not how you're supposed to do the internet. So some stuff ain't even worth the response because it's fueling the fire. Mm. It's throwing gasoline on it. So it was just making it worse and making it worse and making it worse. I was just like, oh my God, these people are ruining my whole ass reputation. You Google Sansa Ray, all types of stuff. Come on, all kinds of lies, all kinds of just craziness. Well, I'm gonna, so everybody that I know, some of y'all nosy, and that's and that's okay. That's Unless okay. I, I'm a Sansa Ray fan, she wouldn't be here right now because I don't bring nobody. Like I, I told her, I'm, like, I don't bring nobody on here to try to ambush them or nothing like that. I'm just anybody that knows me, I'm not that. I'll restore you before I try before I try to break you down. That's just not not the type. That's of how case. I am, right? Yeah, I'm that, not. I'm a, not a. I don't know why they depict me as something that I'm not. I guess because they can't control me, they like to control how people view me. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh -huh. So, but if you Google me, oh, Lord. I just told you, y'all go Google. <laughs> Lord. Y'all are going to be like, what? Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, some of y'all Google it because y'all might have questions for Sansa Ray. You might want to know. Cause like, want to know and, I don't, and I think she's going to be 100% transparent tonight. I mean, I go, sure go ahead am. and Google her. Somebody asked it right now. Uh, Coy just asked, why are they. Uh, why why are they behaving like that towards you? Other than what do you what do you feel you did that made you a target? Other than being a black woman, other than being a black I said, woman, I said it, fighting fighting back and fighting back. Not really, like fighting them using their own energy. Because gotcha. you could because you could you could fight back at somebody your own way and you know defuse the situation. That's not what I did. Mm -hmm. You know I was matching energy. I'm like oh so you gonna call me a B I T C B I C T C H. I'm gonna call you a <laughs> a dusty. <laughs> no, a dusty. a dusty is. <laughs> listen, me calling guys dusty is like a rated G type of word. How I used to call because I used to call them bitch ass niggas. Oh like, wow. <laughs> that's how I used to talk. Yeah, to she's them. from the DMV, so you know they <laughs> they, they cut yeah, like, they stay up. They do it. I'm just joking. I'm just, I don't know like people don't understand where I come from. I know how to get ratchet. It ain't like you know. It's not hard. We black. <laughs> uh -huh. Like I know how to match energy, but I'm not. I'm not sitting here trying to make it seem like I was this innocent person that they was punching on because I was fighting back. Mm -hmm. You know, I was trying to do everything I could to fight back, but it got to a point in 2018 where it was way too much that they was taking it too far. You know, like just too much where they was just trying, like sending me messages telling me to kill myself telling me to kill my children, telling me they was going to sodomize my daughter and my son, what? you know, putting my address up, stuff like that is crazy. Like at some point it's like, okay, y'all are starting to be, it was calling my, my daughter's father's mom, her house, what? you know, like stuff like that. Well, like, what are y'all doing? It's one thing for you to not like me and we throwing insults back and forth on the internet, but to take it to that degree, like you digging that deep into my life, to find the father of my child and call his mom. <laughs> it's 
<laughs> like that that, that means and that's and that's because old boy just didn't like women. And because yeah, like I said, like, I heard I, I mean, he didn't like black women, black women, didn't like didn't like black women. He he didn't like them, but he tried to date you. And so yes. that made him he that's does weird. date, which is what's odd about him is that he does date black women. Okay. Like it's I don't understand how he speaks so negatively about black women and then black women date him, knowing that he posts does he that date type women of, his age. No. That's what it is. He dates Much younger. girls who are significantly younger, so they don't know okay, anything. That's the difference. Yes, yeah, the difference. difference. Like no woman his age and his age group is going to be okay with what he's done. Gotcha. You know, to know, no. Gotcha. So it's, okay. it's yeah. So this so uh now they they I've like I said, I've I've heard some of the things they said. You know what I mean? Like I said, I've read some of those things, right? Uh one such thing was like they said you faked the suicide. Talk about that. Did you did you fake okay. the suicide? So in 2016. Right. I posted this video where I was really upset because these men were stalking and harassing me mm -hmm. like crazy. And I was talking about how being made fun of because of my hair texture and my skin color and my weight and all of this stuff was beginning to get me depressed and consider suicide. This was in 2016. Right. And so the rumor of me committing suicide started then. Right now, in comes 2018. Mind you, I was getting stalked in 2016. Okay. And you got 2017. I'm still getting stalked. 2018, stalked. 2019, stalked. Here comes 2020. And everybody is just on my ass. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said before, we haven't talked about the birth of my son. The birth of my son amped up the harassment. Okay. Right. So we're we going to get to that. Gotcha. And it was so bad that I was already at a breaking point. So I get this email, right? Someone sends an email. And inside of the email, the person has BCC'd every popular YouTuber in the black sector of YouTube. And inside of the email, right? Now, I know it's a troll because it's trolls just has troll written all over it gotcha. inside of the email the person is telling us because i'm included in it that i committed suicide and that my friend marie found my body huh? or my uh, you know my friend marie found my body and i i murdered my i killed myself because of my depression as far as my son and my the situation with my son's father right I see the email immediately. This pushes me off the cliff. Okay. Cause I'm already dealing with so much. I have postpartum depression. I had to move like 20 times. They done harassed me. The police done came. CPS done came. I'm so stressed out. Mm -hmm. I damn shook. take every social media app off my phone, throw the damn phone out the window and I'm done with the internet for five months. I didn't say nothing to nobody. I didn't what? answer the e I didn't answer the email. I didn't tell anybody where I was because I didn't know who started this. First of all, yeah. how did my best friend Marie even get put into the this equation? Like, how did they find out who Marie is? So now they I'm found you, they out. found your ex's son's mother. I'm sure they can find everybody. Right, and I'm like, who is this? Somebody around me. Because I realized that a lot of the people that was participating in this crap used to be my moderators. Okay. They used to be my admins. They used to be on my team. So I'm seeing people who were formerly on my team or people I used to be with, like romantically adding or doing, adding on to this. So I'm pissed. So I don't know if it's my friends, if it's my family. I don't know what's going on. So I just shut everybody off. So the only people that know where I'm at is my mom, my mm -hmm. daughter, my son my daughter's father. That's mainly it. Nobody else in my family, I would not talk to nobody. And I did that for five months, right? So I'm off the internet. I don't know what's going on in the internet. I don't even care what's going on in the internet. I just want to be done. I need to work on my mental health. Five months, I come back. The shit show on the internet has been <laughs> that I committed suicide. Now, mind you, I'm irresponsible as hell because I didn't say anything to my social media managers about where I was. Wow. So my social media managers, or which are the people who run my social media accounts, 
they have no clue that I just been off to the side, just not talking to nobody. They think I'm gone too, because huh? I have not said anything to them. So they got it all over my social media profiles that I didn't commit suicide. So it's on my stuff too. So that added on to the rumor being bigger and bigger because they was reporting it on my social media. Oh wow! And I just tried to have my daughter handle it because I was like, I cannot. This is too much. Now, when you, the one thing that you may not understand yet, and you will, if you keep doing your podcast, you will understand this. Okay, with time, it's it's just one of you. Mm -hmm. But with time the accumulation of people like being a leader, sometimes it feels overwhelming because mm. it's hundreds of thousands of people mm. and they're sending you emails. They're sending you text messages. They're calling it's overload and you only mm -hmm. one person. And a lot of the stuff that you're hearing, it'd be negative sometimes because if you're successful, you're always going to have somebody there that's going to hate you. Of course. And they, somebody somewhere. And so, it was overwhelming me. I was, I couldn't take it. So that's why I was like, I, I can't talk to anybody. And that was dumb. And I admit wow. that. That's why I keep yeah. telling you, the stuff that they say about me is partially my fault. And it's okay for me to take, I'm taking responsibility for that. I'm Absolutely. saying it was me, you know, cause I was just like, I can't, I don't know how to, how to deal with this. Wow. And that's and how I, the, the rumor spread that I committed suicide. All right, so we have the real Sansa Ray with us uh, tonight. And uh, like I said, she's a YouTube TikTok sensation, uh, very well known. She puts out some very good, uh, powerful, empowering videos, certified life coach, uh, teaches love, teaches wealth, has a few books out, uh, doing well. Uh, but she became the target of a bunch of men on social media. Number one, they said she could fake the suicide. But then here's another one. And we need to talk about this. And let's talk. You ready to talk about it? Yeah. I, I, I was going to was gonna give me a drink. I was going to give me a drink to talk about it, but I don't really drink. So I got some Gatorade. Yeah, Gatorade. No, right. It's good and cold. Got some juice. So the other thing that they said, and I want everybody to do me a favor. If you're listening to this right now, go ahead and share this thread because we're going to get into the next part of this conversation. Because I think Sansa Ray, let me say this. Look at me. Hear me well. You're not the only person that has done, you know this, that has done what everybody else is trying to drag you for. Okay? Right. Let me just say that up front. You're not the first person who has done what you, what they, so you, and then at the end of the day, you got a beautiful boy. How old is he? Four. Four years old. Okay. Yep. So you have a beautiful young man, that you, a young fellow that you're raising, all that kind of stuff. So that's all that matters, that you got a healthy baby boy yeah. and that you're raising him to be the best person that he uh can be but some of the people from what i saw because like i said i saw enough i didn't want to keep going with it and let me <laughs> just also say this right here uh, and and this is a metaphor for everybody that's listening youtube if you're listening whoever this is a metaphor i'm gonna say this i'm the type of person that i believe if you kill yourself they can't nobody else kill you so a lot of times i'll take myself out because i before i give you the ammunition to take me out so here we are. We got a chance to talk. So tell us how, because they said that, why were they saying Sansa Ray was a hypocrite? Especially when it, when it came to how your child was conceived. In your words, you tell us about that. I still don't understand how I could possibly be a hypocrite. Okay. I, I don't get that. But I do understand where they get the, you had a baby by a married man. You was a mistress, you was a side chick, you was a, I know where they got this from. Now, what's more entertaining to people is to call me that. Cause it's like, it's juicier. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like, yeah, this is, this is the Tyler Perry movie right here. If yeah. we say she had a baby by a married man, right? Cause it sounds, you know. So that's what it is. You had a baby by a married man. Yeah, I had a baby by a man who was separated. Okay. So you had a baby by a married man. Now, listen. I had I'm a asking a question. You had a baby by a married man, right? I had a baby by a separated man. Okay. <laughs> you know, you know, there are only two categories. You only got married and single. No, it's more than two categories. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you're married, married, you're not single, and if you're single, you're not married. There's different types of marriages. You got same sex marriages. You got common law marriage. You got open yeah. marriage. Yeah. 
But we're not <laughs> but that's the point either. He was separated. We know that much. Separated. So you met yeah. tell us how y'all met. So I used to be a promoter in Atlanta and I used to do events at, you know, in Gwinnett County as well as the city of Atlanta. And I was promoting for this lounge called Theory Lounge in Atlanta. And it was like this upscale bar, uh, but it was kind of far out. And I usually, as a marketing person, because I have a degree in marketing, I would get onto dating sites and I would find single men mm -hmm. and invite them out to come and, you know, meet me at these events, never to date or anything, but, but, I knew that's where I could find people who wanted to go out to lounges and bars, single people. And so as I was sifting through profiles and emails that I was getting from men, I ran across a, a, a email from a guy who was, you know, interested in, in getting at me. And when I first read his emails, I was like, this guy is kind of mm. <laughs> I mean, like something up with him. And I said, something up with you. You know, you guys are going up with you. Mm -hmm. And we just started talking and started building a friendship. And then eventually, maybe like a month or so after, and maybe like a couple of weeks after, it had to be like maybe five weeks, something like that. Uh, we decided to go on our first date with each other. I had offered to for him to meet me at the lounge, but because the lounge was so far out from where he lives, he didn't want to come out to the lounge. So that didn't make me discontinue talking to him. It just decided to be friends, and he just kept, you know, he ended, ended up asking me on a date. And once I got on a date, we had a great date. It was a wonderful date. I mean, we sat there and drank and had crab legs for about two hours and had a good conversation and laughed. It was one of the best dates I ever had with a guy. It wasn't like this expensive place. It was like this little bar called JR Crickets. And we we just sat there and had a couple of drinks and it was amazing. And then at the end of the date, I don't know what made me do this, but I guess it's woman's intuition. I flat out asked him, are you married? I don't know what made me ask him I, I, because he had depicted himself as a single guy the entire time. And I asked him, are you married? And he said, I'm separated. And I said, okay, pulled out my money out my bag, slammed it on the table and left and okay. went outside and forgot that I had picked him up. <laughs> and he came out to the car. Like, been red, that was red flag number one. But go ahead, <laughs> well, no, I'm sorry. I picked him up. I picked him up from his car. His car. Okay, was, okay, okay, okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, I didn't I gotcha. pick him up from his house or nothing. I picked okay, him up from okay. his car. Okay. And so I forgot that I picked him up from his car and drove. And and so he was like, "Thank you." He got in a car. He said, "Thank you for not leaving me for not leaving me." And I was like, "It's cool. I mean, I don't want us to date no more, but we can be cool. I'm not trying to. I don't want to just leave you stranded somewhere. I'm not the kind of person, but." You know, I forgot I had even brought you here. But anyway, so I drove him back to his car, and then it was really the, it, and we just kept talking as friends. So, for a while. so you, so you're promoting for these lounges. You run across these single profiles. You see one that's well, one gets at you, and y'all start communicating. But first of all, you're on a single, you're on a singles profile, so he, you're assuming he's single, right? I mean, it's a dating site. What you else shouldn't even I, have to ask that question on a date. Yeah, site. like it's not like he is. I mean, you could choose married on a date site, but I didn't select married or separated. Okay. So uh -huh. <laughs> I selected single men. And I, I think separated I, I, separated is a cat. I think separated is a category on dating sites. Isn't it? Separated is because it's a yeah, it's it a relationship status. Yeah, yeah, it's separated. Yeah. Is a, yeah. So yeah. so you so okay. Catherine says she can relate. She says she's been duped like that before. So y'all go out. Y'all have a good time. He's saying all the right things, but yeah. woman's intuition kicks in, and you say, "Wait a minute, are you married?" What, what did he say you think? I mean, it was all intuition or did he say something that possibly gave it away? No, he didn't give it. Nothing in him said Mary. Like, he didn't have, like, he wasn't wearing a wedding, wedding ring. He wasn't talking about how many kids he had. He, he didn't have any children. He was, I mean, he just seemed like a free-spirited single man. And I, he didn't say anything that triggered it. It's just something in me was like, I should just ask this dude this. And I asked and he just was like, wow. yeah, I'm separated. And he, he wow. saw me be upset. I was like, ugh. And I left. So let me ask you a question. So when you you were getting ready to leave him, and you were like, I can't date you, whatever, I'm not going to date you, what made y'all reconnect? Oh, well, he well we didn't stop talking. Because okay. I see, see, I'm the type of person, I'm a people person, I talk to everybody. Right. Okay. So I don't I don't have like, oh, because you're the opposite gender, I can't be platonic with you. 
I have mm-hmm. plenty of platonic male friends. I consider you a platonic male friend. I'm not going to bone you. You know what I'm saying? Pe- yeah. People think men and women can't do that. Yes, we can. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not like, I don't, I don't know where people get that from. But that's where I had him at. Like, we were really just cool. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And we would go hang out and hang out. And that's it. Like, How long did this last? I don't know. Another month, I want to say. Like, it, it wasn't, you know. And then as we started talking, right, more, he was like, I told her, you know, she knows about you. She knew about you before we even went on our date. He started talking about her and her dating another man, and how she was a side chick to another man, and how she brings men to the apartment, and how cool she is, and how they've been separated for two years. And he gave me no reason to believe that this was a lie. You know what I mean? It, it, he was just flat out. And honestly, because he was spending so much time with me, how was this hard to believe? Like, we'd be out all night. You know what wow. I mean? Like somebody with a wife would have to check in at some point, or he'd be in trouble for being you would out. Think that. You right. would think that. Yeah. And so he's with me all the time. I mean, we're hanging out like crazy. And we even went out of town. When we started feeling like we had feelings for each other, we, we started going out of town and everything. So how long did it take before you so before you start catching feelings? I don't know. It took after our first day, because I knew I liked him a little bit. Mm-hmm during our first date, but I didn't know I I wanted to be with him Mm -hmm. until after we went to like a house party. We went to like this mansion house party. And it was like in um, somewhere uh, south of Atlanta. And we knew we were going to drink and we knew we were way too far because it had to be like two hours away from the city of Atlanta. So we got a hotel out there. Now, I remember thinking, I'm not ready to have sex yet. Okay. But I know I like him. Mm-hmm. And I know I don't want to be, I don't want to have sex with somebody I'm not in a relationship with. Right? And mm-hmm. he knew this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we was more having the conversation of being in a relationship with each other around this time. So this had to have been, I don't know, it had to have been a month or so. It couldn't have been, it wasn't quick. Like people mm-hmm. think it happened quick, but it wasn't as quick as people think. It wasn't like one week. I met him on a, <laughs> the site. Then the next week, we went on our Now, some more, tradi- some more traditional people would probably say a month is pretty quick. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> back then, you know, like, in 1960, it was... <laughs> you didn't I wasn't like, born in 1960. <laughs> I ain't that old now. Come on now. I am not that old. I am not that old. I am not that old. You know, when y'all was using rotary phones, it took a lot more... <laughs> I know how to use a rotary phone. I do. And we I used to have to stand right there by the wall and hold it up to my ear. I couldn't walk you know too far I mean? from the wall either. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. But let me let me, let me say this because I, I've I'm a ma- I've been a married man. You know what I'm saying. I'm divorced. Uh-huh. So of course, of course, I pro- I'm sure I did some things that disrespected my marriage uh, as I was growing up in the marriage. I did. I mean, I, I did. You did. And and we and yeah, I did. No doubt. And and we. Was she? Uh, nah. I, I, okay. Nah. Nah. No. I, I, if she was, she had me good in food. I mean, real, real. Oh, okay. Food. But yeah, you know. Let me say this, men. You'll be surprised. And, and I've learned this in my little 50 short years of living. It took me a while to get there. But men typically cheat for different reasons than women cheat, right? We either cheat, number one, for greed, or we cheat out of need. It's a difference. There's greed and there's need. Need being maybe my spouse is not putting out. Maybe my spouse has a medical condition. My spouse is not, you know, whatever, not confident. Whatever it is, and I'm not getting any. <laughs> and I'm trying to get it. I've waited on it. And she's still just not giving it to me. And I need some. So let me go out here and hit this right quick. Let me hear and get back to the house. That's need. But then you got these cats who cheat out of greed. They Do you get... think he was cheating? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Do. Why do you think he was cheating? Like, well, if, I don't know if it was need or greed. But I mean, if he was married, he was cheating. I mean, I'm still at this married and, I'm still at the married and single thing. You can't, you can't really get me on this. No, cheating, cheating implies that you're lying, lying and you're hiding something. Well, you you can lie by omission or commission. You can, a, you can you can have like there's a difference between cheating and an open marriage. Did they have an open marriage? Yes. And and it and it was understood. It was straight. It was understood to them. It just wasn't understood to me. Like okay. I was, I didn't know they were still dealing with each other. I thought were they, so they were still dealing with each other. From from my well, I mean, if you listen to the interview that they did, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, to that some, they must have still been doing something. But yeah. according to them, like, cause eventually I talked to her. Okay. So all of the things that he was telling me about them, she said was true. So so she was saying, "Oh no, we're not together. I don't want to be with him. 
I'm glad y'all together. Congratulations. You know, I'm, I'm glad he found somebody else to move on with. You have to understand, she's like 10 years our senior. He's her okay. second husband. And they don't okay. have any children together. And she got four kids from a previous marriage and previous relationship. So she in a different stage of her life than he was. He got married way too young. Okay. So their dynamic was kind of like off before I even came around. Like he had been sleeping around with other women. I wasn't the first woman that he met. You know, I was the first woman he met and wanted to be with. The other women he was sleeping around with. Me, he was in a full-blown situation with, and I didn't find out until after we started dealing with each other that them two were still living together. He what? led me to believe, yeah, he led me to believe that they weren't living together. So after we got in a full-blown situation and we just flowing like a full-blown couple over here, he tells me that he is still living with her and that he wants to move out with her. Now, mind you, I'm done with him after this. I'm hearing this like, oh, nah, hang up, done with him. I don't want to talk to him. Now. He's calling, 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 sending me pictures of him moving out. He decides and, to move at, to his grandmother's house. And what at what stage is this? This is this is how many months after y'all have met now? I don't know. This is okay. So we met in like March. Okay. Okay. June was my birthday. We went to Washington, DC together for my birthday. Mm -hmm. My birthday, June 1st. And so we went to Washington, D.C. We went to like a couple of cookouts, went to meet my family. He met my family. He was telling my family that he wanted to marry me. Wow. And that he wanted to be with me right now. When you know, you know, any anybody who's been married for a long period of time, from what I've been told by people who've been married, you just know. Mm -hmm. Right. From, from the beginning, you know. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I wasn't when June came, I wasn't like. Is he lying about wanting to marry me? I thought he was dead ass serious. We just drove from Atlanta. We went on a road trip. We drove from Atlanta to D.C. Mm -hmm. to be with my family. And I told him before we left, like, please do not let me drive all the way to D.C. with you if you don't plan on being in a relationship with me. So he was like, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go with you if I didn't want to be with you. If I didn't want to take you serious, I wouldn't even ride up all the way to D.C. with you. So I was like, cool. But by the time we got back, from that trip is when I found out he was living where. And so I was like, you need to like, <laughs> you need to tell me what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Basically. Like, it, listen, if you want her, you can have her. I know hard feelings. Y'all go do what y'all going to do. I feel like I'll leave her. Right? Uh -huh. but he just kept saying, I don't want to be with her no more. We've been together 15 years. We don't have no kids. We don't have nothing. Yes. They was together for a long time. And he was just saying he didn't want to be with her. So he moved so in with his grandmother. Had you conceived by now? No. I wasn't okay. pregnant yet. No. Okay. I wasn't pregnant okay. yet. Um, I was living in an investment property in Lawrenceville. And okay. he was living in his grandmother's house in Stone Mountain, which was like an hour away. Like mm -hmm. 45 minutes to an hour away. And he had this phobia of driving. Right? So he was just like, I don't like that we have this distance between us. So it was just, why don't we live together? You mm -hmm. want to, he wanted to no longer live with her. I didn't want to live in Lawrenceville anymore because it was so much, far, it was far away from Atlanta and I needed to be close to Atlanta for business. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. So we decided to take all of our stuff and put it in a storage unit together. So we got a storage unit. We was like, all right, we're going to stay in hotels until we find a place. Mm -hmm. and so we started looking around for places to live. And as we're doing this, he is, oh Lord, he's sent telling me how uncomfortable he is with some of the people that I work with. So I'm, I'm discontinuing relationships, business relationships with people, especially males, because this guy is talking about being my husband. We're talking about having kids together. This is my future. And if my husband is saying to me, or my future husband is saying to me, I, I want you to break these type of ties that you have with certain men. I'm going to do that because I want him to feel comfortable when I go do work. And so when I'm ending these business relationships, I'm also like destroying streams of income. Okay. Cause I'm an entrepreneur. I have every business relationship I have is, is bringing me money. So if I exit out, it's done. So we're staying at hotels and I'm telling them like, okay, we starting to run out of money. All right, because if I you're not supplementing the money that I'm losing out, I was the one making more money. 
he was making $12 an hour. And so one of the reasons why I decided to start dating him to begin with is because a lot of the men in my YouTube audience was telling me that I needed to start giving men, um, blue collar men, more of a shot to be with me because my standards were too high. Like, cause I was the type of woman where I didn't want to date a man who wasn't college educated. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to date a man who didn't have his own house, his own car, his own, you know, he had to have money to me that mattered. And so guys was in my audience. They was like, no, you need to lower your standards. It's okay to date guys that don't have blue, blue, blue. You, you in your own way. <laughs> so I was like, okay, all right. I'm going to choose this guy. So anyway, I put that aside and we ended up struggling so hard that we ended up having to start sleeping in the back of his Ford Explorer. And I ended up washing up in Walmart bathrooms because I didn't want to leave him. I felt like he left his situation to be with me and he was taking me serious enough to want to start a family and a marriage. And what kind of woman would I be if I left him behind? simply because we're struggling financially. And to me, that's stupid. So I always tell women now, when I, in my book, like I wrote a book about our situation. And inside my book, right? Inside my book, I wrote about it, what happened between me and him. Inside my book, I tell women, number one, don't need a man who's separated. That's everybody less. And I, I tell people that because that's what y'all want me to tell people. Uh -huh. Because I'm, to me, I'm mature enough to know that there's plenty of people out here dating people who are separated. It's plenty of people who are married to someone that they were dating when that person was separated. Okay, Adrian Bailon, her and her husband started dating when he was separated. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So people do that. That's just part of, you know. But I tell people not to do that because that's what y'all want me to say. But my lesson for women is as follows. Do not date men who claim they want to lead a relationship. And he don't have his finances in order. You have to have your finances in order. Mm -hmm. Yourself. Now... Mind you, we sleeping in the back of the Ford Explorer, okay? Mm -hmm. And I, me and him barely had sex, James. We didn't have sex often. It's oh. not like we, because we did more constructive things with our time. The sex wasn't the best. I mean, he was like prematurely ejaculating. He had erectile dysfunction. And this was an issue that he had the entire time we was together. He said he had this problem since he went to the Dominican Republic and slept with some prostitutes. And this is something he told me after we done had sex. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, crap. What if I got, like, some type of STI or something? You know what I mean? Like, if I start itching, I swear to God, dude, <laughs> I'm coming for you, right? But by this time, I'm trying to accept him and all his flaws. You got any questions before I can? Yeah, hold on, hold on, because I'm I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm still stuck back here. So, and I'm not, like I said, I'm. This is not a judgment session. I ain't pointing the finger. We have we're talking, we're having a conversation, and I and I get it because I know so many women who are so in love with the idea of being in love, and they're so in love with, you know, they've seen all these fairy tale marriages on a relationship, mm -hmm. you know, relationships on TV and. You know, the Huxtables had certain standards, but we ain't even got the Huxtables no more. So I'm really looking for love. And, and some one country singer said, I'm looking for it, but I'm looking in all the wrong places. So mm -hmm. I get all of that because that's crazy. I mean, I mean, I mean to some people, they say, how had, had he set a date for the divorce? OK, so we talked about the divorce a lot. OK. And I want to talk about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. We talked about that a lot because I was like, first of all, I don't want to move somewhere together if you still legally tied to her because that's a problem for me and my business that's gonna mess up my money my situation my i ain't got time for that when I did you know? make that decision before before you moved out of the house in lawrenceville or no i was, I was already i was saying this before i left okay gotcha, i was gotcha, saying gotcha. oh no i was on his ass about this okay. divorce okay. oh no okay. i was not that's, that's what i'm trying to hear that's what I'm oh trying yeah to i was i was and what does he say i was there and he's like Okay, you know, we we been meaning to sign our divorce papers. It's something that we've been thinking about doing, but we haven't been able to do it because we don't have the money to divorce. Because I think in a, in Atlanta, I think it's three hundred dollars to divorce. So he was $1. asking $1. me, "Is where is what?" I said twelve dollars an hour. You got to work like two weeks in uh, three or four. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm sorry. <laughs> twelve dollars an hour. That's four hundred eighty dollars a week. You got to take out thirty five percent for taxes. So that's gonna bring out one hundred twenty dollars. Yeah. So you bringing home two hundred ninety five dollars a week. You can't do it. You got to work. Yeah, three he weeks was. I get it. I understand. That. Yeah. So he both of them was like kind of struggling financially. So he asked me for the money, and I said, 
I am not, that's not my business. I love yeah. you, but y'all got to deal with that. That's y'all. Y'all got to end that for us to move to do something else. And so one day after, at the end of June, he was supposed to meet up with her. I know the date. It was like June 23rd. Okay. And that was the day them two met up and signed their divorce papers. And she was supposed to file them that day, but didn't. Wow. And I didn't know they didn't until later on. Okay. Oh, so you thought you thought he did. Oh, yeah. I thought they was. Listen, them two was not playing when they told me that she was over. Like okay. both of them. This was coming from both of them. This is this wasn't him just selling me some pipe dream. She was saying the same thing. Is that she was saying the same thing. Listen, so, I want you to talk to Catherine right quick. Hold on. Catherine asked a question. She said, I'm wondering, and, I, and this is not Jim. Let's this, this, listen to the whole thing before you say it. She said, I wonder what you're missing as a woman to want a man who's not enhancing you but taking away from you. Red flag after red flag is in this story. What's the background with your father? What relationship exactly. did you witness growing up? Exactly. So, so what was your relationship like with your father? Thank you, Catherine. What? I love your people because your people... <laughs> My people think we call the intellectual stew for a reason. Now, exactly. some of us are gonna mess with you a little bit because Coy is messing. She said, "Yeah, you had a pipe, it just wasn't with a dream." But I, <laughs> so, so Coy is gonna do that. <laughs> so we do that kind of stuff. So, but but Coy, she said the pipe, the pipe was premature, so it wasn't really like the pipe was real performing like that. She, it was. She was. I'm here. What I'm hearing from her is, she was so in love. You know, they got cap. They called him Captain Saver back in the day. But maybe you had a captain save a nigga. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you're trying to save a nigga. I don't, I don't know. Oh, y'all forgive me. Everybody doesn't know. I, I don't Listen. know what it is. I don't know what it is. So I answer don't the question. Know what, it was. what question do you want her to answer or ask? I'm sorry. No, I'm about answer. your relationship with your father. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to answer all of it. So I have been single so long because I've, I've been most of my okay. adult life celibate. Okay. Right? Because I promote celibacy. Mm -hmm. And so I am. Um, had been single for so long. And the men in my audience, remember, I was a dating coach for men for 20 years. Okay. So men were telling me, well, the reason why you're still single after all of this time is because you're in your own way. Okay. And so when I met him, I was moving. That was me moving out of my own way. But even though this man gave me red flag after red flag after red flag, I didn't trust my own intuition enough. I didn't trust me enough to say, hey, Sasha Ray, Sasha Ray is telling you something's wrong you know something is wrong why won't you leave because i wanted to be married so bad and i wanted to be married to him so bad and i felt like that relationship was going to be the last time i tried with someone and i told him this i was like this is going to be the last time i even put forth the energy to try to be with a man and i'm going to do everything that i can to try to work this out because i can't do it anymore after this you know what i mean i can't i can't I want to love someone. I want someone to love me. I want a family. You know, I want I want to be held at night. I want a man to cook for. Wow. I want someone to I want to get a dog. You know, <laughs> I want I want to take walks in the park. And mind you, we was doing all this this cool shit together. I mean, we was hiking, picnicking, going out to the movies all the time, going out to eat. I mean, we was all over the place. We had a great time. Okay, outside of all this other stuff that we was dealing with, we had a good time together. Okay, and even when we were sleeping in the back of his Explorer, we used to watch the stars together. You know, we used to hold hands and enjoy the night air. It, it wasn't always bad. Fairy tale so type stuff, huh? It was good. And, and now I get that there's a possibility that he was love bombing me because he just needed someone to give him a place to stay. Because she probably was mad and wasn't having it and didn't want him living in there anymore because he finally found a woman that he was interested in. Because like I said, he was sleeping with other women before I came around. He just never connected to any of them like he did me. He was in a full-blown situation. He was with me all the time. Wow. Like, I was taking him to work. I was I was making him lunch or giving him money for lunch sometimes mm. and picking him up and dropping him off. And, you know? And... Yeah encouraging him to go to family functions. I was going to the family functions with him because she was distancing him from his family. So he wasn't seeing his family. The whole 15 years he was married to her, he barely saw his family. And me, I'm a very family oriented person. So I was encouraging him to be around his family more. So he was going to family functions, the 4th of July, out to dinner, going to Papa Do's together. 
we was having a good time. So it was easy to think we was headed in a positive direction. Then it, and, and we was doing live streams together. If you go on, our, well, on my YouTube channel, we got live streams up there of us talking about being married. We I was, saw you saw it. You saw, I, saw oh, it. You that, I saw it, but this is my thing. Found Everything starts with a foundation. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and if rocking. the foundation is fractured, fractured or fragile right. or frail, you just can't really build anything strong. That mean, and right. I got you. We're not judging you. man. My, uh, Melinda said, I feel you, Sansa Ray. Uh, what's called it? Uh, Catherine's talking about how narcissists uh, act. Uh, Corey says she thinks it was love because y'all were content in any condition. It takes a special woman that'll sleep in the back of a Ford. Uh, you know, for what was it, Bronco? What you say? What Explore, Ford Explorer? <laughs> and I'm not making fun of that. Believe me, because that that is more than a notion. You know, to to do that. You know, what I mean, I'm not I, making. You know, did I didn't want to leave him. I didn't okay. want to. I was like, if we can get through this. Did you did you not want to leave him for you, or did you not want to leave him for him? Do you think felt like he couldn't make it without you, or you felt like you he couldn't make you couldn't make I it think without him? I I felt like I, he couldn't make it without me. That's what I'm because I. Cause I kept, cause he kept saying, "Please don't leave." Don't save him. You remember that song? They don't want to be saved. Don't. <laughs> Stop making jokes out of my pain. I'm just, no, I'm, 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 I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. That's my baby dad. I get, but no, but listen. So, 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 so. so. Now y'all, y'all, y'all have, y'all have gone through the. Uh, uh, you moved out. Moved in oh, the back okay, of the yeah. in the back of the explorer. Oh no, did you did you answer the question about the father dynamic? Oh my father. So my father, the last time I seen my father face to face, I was maybe six. Okay. And we were dancing. Okay. And I didn't see him my whole life until I turned about 22. I went looking for him because I was looking for him for a long time. And then I found him when I was like 22 or 23. And I started asking him about what kind of woman I should be if I wanted a husband. Wow. And uh he said to me, I needed to be a home. A what? A hoe. He should have stayed lost. He should have stayed lost. He definitely should have stayed lost. Yeah. But he did say, "Be a freak." He was like, "If you fuck him good, he don't want to be. He don't want to be with you forever." That's what your daddy taught you. No, I was I like, heard. I was like, okay, <laughs> you know what I mean. And I never, I never talk to well i did i tried to build a relationship with him but he ended up having one of like his girlfriends called me and she was like I, I was too grown she was telling me i was too grown to be looking for my father and he ain't got no kids and she wanted dna tests and i'm like why he let her call me anyway i was like too grown for that i was like i'm good so i stopped talking to him and then eventually he passed away so yeah so oof, now i yeah. was raised by my stepfather okay but my stepfather was molesting me Okay. So the way okay. that I am with okay. that is um, because his form of abuse was cleanliness. Like he had like OCD. So he had me cleaning up shit after the dogs. He had me doing all the cooking. He had me cleaning up the kitchen and living room. And if I didn't clean up properly, perfectly, yeah. I get my ass beat. You know what I mean? And he just slapped me around with like whatever was in his hand at the moment. Mm -hmm. When When I'm dating someone, what makes me attracted to a man is how clean he is wow. the cleaner he is the more i like him wow. and that's kind of freaky dicky i don't understand the psychology in that now, i'm trying to say you were coexisting in the back of that ford Ex ford explorer well, that, you also that became an argument between us because we okay. used to clean he and i cleaned excessively because he was so clean too he yeah. and I cleaned excessively. And then when I get, got pregnant, because I got pregnant, you know the live stream you've seen of us talk uh, talking about marriage? Yeah. He and I? Uh -huh. That was the night my son co was conceived. Wow. In that same damn room. That's why that live stream is so important. Like, because he and I was talking about kids and marriage in that live stream, and that was the day that my son was conceived. Wow. And... After we got out of that specific hotel, because we was in a hotel room, we was at the Red Roof Inn, I think, mm -hmm. and we stayed at the Red Roof Inn a lot. But as you as you know, hotels can be very expensive when you're living in them every day. Absolutely, you know, like that's that's a lot of money. So he, we individually just started sleeping in the back of his Ford Explorer, and I'm washing up at Walmart parking lot, and I'm starting to notice I'm sick. Like I'm starting to get sick, and I'm like something feels wrong. I always had like this feeling I was pregnant. 
the whole okay. time I was with him, I always had like this pregnancy energy. And I had fertility issues before then. Think about this. My daughter is 21. My son four. That's a big age gap right there. Oh, so, wow. f- so from the time between when I would stop being celibate and be inside of a relationship, I get in a relationship with a guy. He wants kids and we can't even conceive any. I tried to conceive in other mm. relationships and couldn't. And so here I am with this dude and a pregnancy energy is just, I just keep it. I kept saying to him, I kept getting scared because my cycle before I got pregnant with my son, my cycle came late twice. And I kept saying something, I feel like I'm pregnant. So then one day I, he went to work and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take a pregnancy test. Cause maybe that's what's wrong with me. Cause I don't feel well. And we were staying at another hotel at that time. And I took the test, came out positive. I put it in the bathroom when he came home. I said, well, we came back to the hotel room. I said, look in the mirror, you know, look in the cabinet. It's something in there for you. And he opened it and he was happy. He came out of the bathroom smiling and he hugged me and kissed me. And then we had sex. Did you th- did you think once you conceive you had him? No, I thought I had him already. You I thought you I, had him before then. You, ain't, you didn't think you didn't think you needed a baby to get get him. No, why would I? No, because I know women that think like that. No. I've heard a woman say out of her mouth, "My only purpose for meeting a married man was to mess his whole world up." Got pregnant on purpose. I know women. Do like you that. okay At, during this? Conversation, I'm not asking you, you do that. I'm just saying. No, I'm this, saying. But during this conversation, have I come off at any moment in time? Where I was uncertain about whether he loved me or not. No, nah, that's why I'm, I, but I just got to ask the questions. You know what I'm saying? Because I know some. Yeah, I was here. never, I was never, I never looked at him as a married man. That's what I'm trying to explain yeah. to y'all. He always depicted himself as mine. I didn't have to like do these tricks and tactics. You see what Sammy just said? You see what Sammy just said? Of course, Sammy, Sammy that just said life. that uh, he was happy because now he has a lifelong link to you. Sammy, you wanted something, bro. Yeah. He wanted something. I yeah. think that might have been it. Yeah. But then that don't make any sense because why doesn't he take care of his son? He still got a link to you, though. Listen to this. So this is when stuff good got point, bad Sammy. on the internet. Mm-hmm. That is a good point, Sammy. That is, you You might have be on something. <laughs> but he was happy initially. And if you looked at that same video, of he and I doing a live stream together where we was talking about kids. It's a pregnancy and delivery video. So it's at, as you start watching the entire video, you start to see him at the ultrasound and the look on his face. I don't know if you saw, did you see it, James? No, I don't remember that one. I might have saw it, but I don't remember it. He had like, okay, the pregnancy video is on my son's YouTube channel. My son's YouTube t- channel is called Raising Justice. Okay. R A E S I N G. J-U-S-T-I-C-E, Raising Justice. Mm-hmm. And it's a labor and delivery video. And inside of the it's clips of he and I together. We we at the monument, we at the Lincoln Memorial, we out taking pictures, we do all types of stuff. And it shows us talking about marriage, talking about kids, and then it shows when we went to the ultrasound for my son. Mm-hmm. The look on this dude's face, mm-hmm. that's when it hit him he was having a baby. Yeah, and he the look on his face, he was so disgusted with the wow. idea of having a child. The reality set in. The reality of it was setting in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catherine said, "Uh, that yeah, they had an open marriage because of his ED. That makes sense. Why the wife didn't care? Because it was ED. His ED it was ED. Erectile dysfunction." <laughs> You said the sex was trash. I mean, well, that's my boy Mark was saying. Yo, audience. You said the sex was horrible. So if the sex was horrible, she ain't got nothing to keep fighting him, keep him home. I mean, she had it for 15 years. She was sleeping with somebody else. The whole time? I think, no, I think around the time with the two years that they were supposedly separated, I think she, yeah, was with somebody else. But when I got pregnant, it started to change. The dynamics started to change because she probably wanted to have kids with him. Mm-hmm. Those 15 years that they was together and they never had any children together. So to see him happy and in love and having a baby by somebody else, 
probably made her feel some type of way. She started coming back around. This is when I started noticing he was changing because he wasn't talking to her. To, okay. He was he was leading me to believe he wasn't talking to her. So his behavior was like normal. He mm -hmm. was the same guy until I got about three or four months pregnant. And then he started getting different. You know, like wow. he started because uh, I didn't start feeling sick until I was like six or seven weeks. I, I started noticing something was different with my body. And mm -hmm. so this is when I decided, you know, maybe I should take a test because I feel, you know, and then mm -hmm. that that second or third month came. We were supposed to be keeping my pregnancy a secret because okay. we didn't want I wanted to make it to, to my second trimester first before mm -hmm. I started telling everybody I was pregnant because I didn't know whether I was going to have a miscarriage. I hadn't been to the doctor yet. I didn't know. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. So we was just like, let us figure this out. Let's figure out where we're going to live. We're going to do this before we tell anybody. Mm -hmm. And so one day he came home from work and he just comes to the door. And he was like, I told her. And I was like, I thought we wouldn't tell nobody, you know? Mm -hmm. So he mm -hmm. broke my trust with that. That's when I started to realize that our relationship was going down the drain. He started talking about her, her heart condition. And, you know, she, I, I think when she found out I was pregnant, she started complaining about her heart condition and her heart condition was a big thing inside of their marriage because anytime he would try to leave, she would start talking about this heart condition again. And, and they went through like this traumatic situation with her heart mm. and she almost died in front of him and, and all of this stuff. So, my thing was, I felt like she was just using that as a tool to get him to get closer to her. He was saying that that's the type of shit she does. So for me, it was just like, okay, now that she sees I'm pregnant, she wants him back. Wow. And I think that's when it started to get like different between us. And then the drama started and then people on social media started to see, cause we were posting content. Mm -hmm. So people on social media were starting to get into our business and then that that movement of men started whispering in here, his ear. So suddenly, I have men contacting me telling me he dirty dick Rodney. He had, he had got us sleeping around with a whole bunch of women, and I need to leave him and just put him on child support, right? So they telling me this, you know, and I'm like, I'm just going, nah, I can't. You you are outsider. You don't know what's happening inside of our relationship. So they could get me to leave him. So they go they go to him, try to get wow. him to leave me. So they, oh, she a hoe. That might not be your baby. Such and such, such. So he's coming to me, saying, starting to say all of the things from that movement of men. Mm -hmm. He's he's starting to say the things that they say to me. Yeah. So I'm I'm seeing a difference in this dude, and I'm just like, this dude is acting very different from how he would usually be. And yeah. Then one, he's. Go ahead, huh? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Then one day, this is what ended it all. We I noticed a pattern to where we have like this amazing week mm -hmm. and and things were going too well like it would be like we have five good days and then suddenly he's pick an argument with me and he was doing this and i was like why the fuck does this man keep doing this he tried to leave like three times he kept mm -hmm. saying he needed space and i was like okay now i'm just like well, I'm like, oh, you know whatever he would go and he would come back on his own and he did that three times and then one day he hit me up from work. And he's like, I got something to tell you. And I was like, okay, my mother over here yelling at me. <laughs> you hear my mama? No, I hear. Yelling at my son. <laughs> <laughs> my son, she chasing my son. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do. So he, um, he says to me, I, I don't want our baby. I don't know how I feel about you. What? And I think you should put up our son up for adoption and I want to get back with my ex. And I was just like, what about me? He was just basically like, what about you? And I was just like, did this nigga just turn into like a whole new dude? Like, who is this dude? Because the dude I know would never, what is this? And he was like, I'm just telling you how I feel. I was like, okay, well, fine. Just come get your things out of the house. Because by this time, I started paying for the whole. I started trying to find other ways to generate money. So I started okay. asking for donations online. I was doing graphic design. So by this time, I, I needed stability because I was pregnant. I couldn't be sleeping in the back of a Ford Explorer. So by this time, I'm like paying for all of the hotel rooms myself. Because mm -hmm. before, he, was, he wasn't kicking in the gear. His mind was on sleeping with women and women at his job. And he would come home from work talking to me about women from his job. And I kept saying, you should be thinking about how much money extra money you need to be making so we can move somewhere. We about to have a baby and you over here talking to me about the women at your job. I don't hear about these goddamn women. I want you to tell, I want you to tell me what your side hustle is so we can get out of these hotels. 
but he didn't do that. So I had to start kicking in the gear. Mind you, I'm sick as hell. Remember, I'm pregnant. So I'm I'm the first trimester. I'm sick as hell. And I'm doing graphic design and doing side hustles to pay for a hotel room by myself. So I'm mm-hmm. asking for donations. He comes to get his stuff. He leaves. Next thing you know, my hotel room phone is ringing off the hook. He telling he done told people where I'm at. The hotel lobby people knocking on the door. They knock on the door in the middle of me doing a live stream, telling me they're gonna kill. They heard I was gonna kill myself. Come to the door with a um, security person. What? Like a, a like a um, not security person. Two police officers and the security from the hotel. Like we're knocking on your door because someone called us and told us that you just killed yourself on live stream. Huh? Yeah, this was the shit that was happening. And nobody knew where I was but him. So he, Wow. So he's starting to make my life screwed up because he done joined the movement of men that's talking, that's harassing and stalking me. So that's he, crazy. So he telling them all types of stuff and he teamed up with them. Now he done created a YouTube channel. On his YouTube channel is him talking all of this negative shit about me, posting all of our text messages. So now I got to respond to that stuff. So, and I'm doing this pregnant. So I'm getting on live streams. I'm asking for donations. I'm homeless. I'm in a hotel, homeless, asking for money. And I need food because I ain't got nowhere to go. I can't go back to where I, the investment property that I used to live in, excuse me. Dev, I'm about to cry. I'm sorry. The investment property that I used to live in, I can't go back there. I can't step backward. I'm pregnant. So I I raised $10,000 in crowdfunding, and I moved to California. And I ain't turned back since. So how old are you during this time? And and, and, uh, how old are you? And and how far along pregnant were you in your pregnancy at this time? This was, my son was born in 2018. Uh, In November... I left Atlanta November 2017. Okay. So you had the baby out in California. I had the baby out in California. He's never met our son. He's never met your son. Never never reached out anything of the sort. Well, our families was trying to get us to, you know, like to get him to act right. Because he's the only one that has been acting right. Mm -hmm. Eventually, he called me and said that he wanted me to pay child support. Like he wanted you to pay child support. Not me. I'm sorry. He wanted to pay child support for me to put him on child support. Right. Instead of me putting our son up for adoption, he never. He got a better, he got a better job now. He was in, this unemployed time? last time I talked to him. He has a better job. No, I'm talking now. about at this time that he's talking about putting him on child support because. No, back then he still had the twelve dollars an hour. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm not trying to laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> but but, the, but my listen, my daughter's he, seventeen, huh? Go ahead. I know. Go. I was making twelve dollars an hour when I was like in high school. Yeah. I, I think I was making fifteen because I was working as a at a law. My firm. daughter, my daughter's eighteen. She said she would not go anywhere for less than fourteen dollars an hour. Yeah, she I'm not with that. No, no, yeah. no. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. So, and, and so, and this is my thing: a twelve dollar hour type nigga <laughs> is easily swayed. A twelve dollar hour type I, Negro I ain't, ain't, ain't the type of person that's gonna make decisions on their own. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna they're gonna go with the wind every time. Not, but you know, I, was, I, was I, I ain't to going to work that. for nobody for twelve dollars. Uh, but what I'm telling I, you, I, is, put it, I put it in the. Uh, she was 38 during that time, right? Yeah, I was 38. 30. I'm okay. 42 now. He's okay. 38. His okay. his estranged wife was eight years older than us. Okay. And okay. he didn't have a GED or a high school diploma, so he couldn't get something more than that. He could only afford something, like he like, like who's gonna hire for hey, you? Let me tell you, you can go and cut diploma. grass. You can go cut five yards and make, you know what I mean? I mean, that's just a different type of mentality. You understand? Well, what I'm saying? I mean, but that's what, that's the type of man I was encouraging him to be. We would talk about business. Gotcha. We would talk about uh, him starting another business and him getting his high school diploma. I was encouraging him to be a better man, but you can't believe in someone who don't believe in themselves. Like it, it takes him to go out there and do that stuff. No matter how I much that. I try, like, you know, I'm an empowerment type person. Like I'm motivated. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. what I do. That's what I do for a living. So that's what I did with him. Gotcha. And, and I see it. And to me, that sounds like that. That's where you went wrong, and 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 you're and you're being penalized for trying to do what you thought was right now. Because the easiest thing that Corey, I mean, the easiest thing Corey thought she got a question, but go, uh, a very serious question. So I'm waiting on that question to come through. But the easiest thing that would have been to me seems like Sansaray is when y'all met at that lounge <laughs> on that day. And you found out once he said he was married and wasn't divorced, uh, even if he was just yeah. separated, 
the easiest thing would have been to walk away then. Yeah, I should have just stopped talking to him. Yeah, he should have just stopped talking to him. I, should, but, I shouldn't even be his friend or anything. Yeah. 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 Because she's stupid. Somebody said, was he light skinned? Don't do me like that. Yeah, he High was master skin. Viper. He was? He, he was light skinned. Lord. So do tell me what that means, women, since since somebody said uh the light uh, skin since, was be the problem. Really? I don't usually date light skin guys. Wow. Every let me tell you something. Every person I think out of that one guy that I told you was like the ringleader from the male movement of men who hate black women, yeah. he was dark skinned. But every single man who has given me a problem online ever since then, who has screamed the loudest about me and spread the most lies and rumors, they been light skinned. Wow. Wow. All right. So let's talk about this because everything, yeah. everything, I mean, this has been bad. People have uh, empathized with you. You know, some of them, I mean, uh, Catherine has a, <laughs> Catherine has a group that she called, uh, I'm sorry that happened to you. Uh, <laughs> and, in that, in, and in that group, she That's talks cool. about, she talks about a lot of people who've been molested in their families and they mm -hmm. kept it silent, you know, and, uh, and they, they protected the, uh, the uh, accuser. I mean, the, uh, what do you got? The offenders uh, and mm -hmm. all that. So she's, she really, those, so my people are feeling you. You know what I'm saying? That so they, they not everybody's like I said. Don't want to try to put nobody in a coffin, uh, or or bury somebody who's already been buried before. So that's the last thing. But I applaud you for number one breaking away uh, when you realize because he he was wrong as two left shoes. If you had a baby by a married man, the mm -hmm. married man is just as com complicit as anyone else. Uh, somebody asked me, is this panel open? Are you com are you comfortable with that? Um, here's what I'm not comfortable with, because it the reason why I haven't spoke about this or done a panel before, mm -hmm. um, because I I tried to do one when I was pregnant with my son, and mm -hmm. people just kept disrespecting me. Okay. Hey, out. Thank you. <laughs> the, I wonder why I see you in your diaper. So, <laughs> um. People was disrespecting me. I just don't want to be disrespected, and I don't want to argue with nobody. Oh, I'm not. You know, we don't do argue. Thing. We don't do arguing over here. Somebody, somebody named I don't know who Master Viper is, but Master yeah. Viper saying she's not telling the whole story. So I don't. Yeah, know that's what... that's one of the trolls. They call themselves the Viper Pit. Gotcha. So that's not somebody I would want to. Um... But this is your forum, so we we don't necessarily. We, yeah, we, I'm we not know. because they part of the problem. Yeah, like I have no reason to to be dishonest about my situation is my situation like that's mm -hmm. another thing people who are strangers and haven't been in my situation will try to tell me that i'm lying about my situation you yeah. don't know my situation james saw the interview with my son's father and um his estranged wife dude. and the mm -hmm. other dude he's seen mm -hmm. it he he i told him to do research before he interviewed me so he could have a different perspective the Absolutely. problem with people who want to classify me as a liar is they don't have the intellectual ability to be able to understand or comprehend because they're coming from a place of number one emotional ignorance that's number mm -hmm. one they don't have the empathy they're to the, like it seems to me like the people who have the most negative things to say about me it isn't about the story. They're not even concerned about the story. They just don't like me. They don't want to see me say the truth or speak my truth or feel what I feel. They don't have any empathy for me. They think but, I'm just, you know, just the person that they hate. You know, you know what I mean? Well, listen, let me, let me tell you. First of all, look, look at me. Look at me. Lift up your head. <laughs> I'm on your team. So don't worry. I don't worry about all the other stuff. I don't worry I don't about the I'm going to tell you why. No, no. Let me just say, let me just say this. Let me say this. Uh, first of all, it takes two to tango. Okay? It takes two to tango. Uh, and if both people were complicit in that relationship, then that's all it is to me. And at the end of the day, a little boy was born. At the end of the day, four years later, you've moved to san francisco i mean wherever you live i don't know wherever you i don't know la sacramento wherever you talk about, i forgot but wherever <laughs> you move to i just know it's in california and it's three four hours three hours behind us and at the end of the day you're raising that baby i could care less about if i stay stuck in my past i'll never get to my future <laughs> i would never get to my future if i stay yeah. stuck in the past and i'm gonna tell you something master viper i don't know you very well but I'm, it's a very vindictive person that sticks a knife in a dead body. And when she started off this show tonight, she said that I am part of the blame for the attack that has taken place on me on the internet. 
So to me, that's somebody falling on their own sword. Now, bro, if a bro, woman, man, whatever, I don't know what you are, but whatever it is, if you feel like you got to go and stick a knife in a dead body, you do that. You do that. If that makes you sleep at night, I'm going to bed tonight and I'm going to go to bed based on this conversation. Now, here's the powerful part to me, Sansa Ray. Guess what? After you slept in the back of a Ford, after you got left in a hotel room by a married dude, okay, that had a baby, because a married dude had a baby with a single woman. He's not the victim in this situation, in my opinion, okay? So a married dude, nigga, if you can, sorry, bro, if you can't see it, like, yeah, I just said it. Uh, she just said she didn't fake her death. You just missed that. You, if you rewind the interview, you'll be able to see it a little bit more. But but at the end of the day, and, I, and, and dead body is a metaphor. You got to be able to think beyond. That's why they call this the intellectual stew. You got to think the dead body was a metaphor. It wasn't a real dead body when I said that. So, But we're, we're, on, a, we're on a whole other show right now. But, uh, but Sansa Ray, keep your head up. Listen to me. You rebound it. You're in California. You're taking care of your son. You're, you got your mom with you. You're doing well. Forget how many people you know died in what they were in. They couldn't bounce back. And you're still That's true. putting out, and you you bounced back. You hear me, Sean? I mean, you, listen to me, young lady. You bounce. Hold on, watch this. I'm, this this is the easiest way to do this part right here. Cause I don't I'm, I'm I don't, I don't play that stuff. Here we go. Block user. I don't want to hear no more. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I now they're gonna be after me next. So we ain't gonna hear no more from him. That's done. You made it. You bounced back. It's your truth, it's your story. And that was my purpose in giving you an, an avenue to tell your story tonight. And I think my audience will agree with me that you've told your story the best you could. It is what it is. It's your truth. It's your yeah. truth. And I, I you, don't, and, go ahead. I just don't understand. It. Like, here's what's, what's bothering me about everybody that claims I'm lying about this story. It's not a good story. It's not like I'm I'm lying about a story and I'm I'm saying something amazing here. Yeah. Like the, I'm saying something terrible. So how am I lying about something that's you know what I mean? This is what happened with us. It's proof of receipts everywhere. I just feel like people just want to pin me as this side chick mistress who had a baby and they don't want to hold my son's father accountable. And I'm the only person holding him accountable for it. I will hold him accountable for it because we had so many conversations about having children. We had so many conversations about being married. We had so many conversations about them two no longer being married. We had, mm -hmm. you know, we planned a life together. Now, if he didn't want to be married and he was just selling me a dream he needs to be held accountable for that. And y'all yeah. don't have to do that. I'm going to do it. Okay. It was my mistake. I chose him. I did it. So it's up to me to just be like, dude, you at some point, he going to have to face the consequences of him having a son. He may not met his son yet. But one day, karma, that's how karma works. One day, he going to have to face it. And I don't one, know. I don't know how that's gonna go for him. Well, one thing about karma is karma does what it's gonna do on its own. You don't. You, yeah, we don't I'm manipulate gonna... karma. We don't set a GPS for karma. We don't yeah, send I'm karma. Not karma sure. got you know. But at the end of the day, I gotta tell you. I'm first of all. Thank you, Karen. Me, Catherine. Catherine said I'm proud of her. Uh, Melinda thank said you. Uh, Catherine Rayancy. Period. No one can tell her to give her to give my testimony. Believe her or don't. That's on them. That's their problem. So everybody, everybody said, listen, some of them said they don't agree with your decisions. They yeah, say that, but you know, you, and you've already terrible. said that. Yeah, you, yeah, you've already. So that's what I'm saying. If a person has committed suicide, why are you going to stick a knife in a dead body? I have a problem with that. And I don't have no, because they can come for me. I'm here. My name is James. I got, I got big feet. Please. That means y'all just give me more followers. So I ain't got no problem with that. I need some more followers. But when you get over here, I'm going to teach you anyway. I promise you, I'm gonna teach you. Cause I'm gonna keep you. I ain't got you. I'm, I'm gonna teach you. Cause I, that's that's, my, that's what my job is to do. I'm hey, my grandma and them used to sing this little song called "This Little Light of Mine." I'm gonna let it shine, and this is my way of letting my light shine on this type of interview. So you hear me, young lady, and hear me well. You hear me well. First of all, I'm proud of you. If nobody has told Thank you, you. That, I'm gonna tell you that I'm proud of you because you. you have rebounded. Number two, I'm gonna tell you this. I resonate with your message. I appreciate what you're telling young women. I think you should continue 
to tell them. I think you should be open enough in what you are and receptive mm-hmm. to the uni- to when when universe comes and it I mean, helps you correct something that you said in the past. Correct it and move forward because guess what? Life is constantly lending lessons. We just got to consider true. the clues. But right. we, a lot of times we don't consider the clues, right? We don't consider the clues because we get caught up and you let that person get you real emotional real fast. But this is your truth and you've lived it. And it's because your truth. It was, I, I just want no, everybody to understand that I don't want any woman to ever experience the level of pain and anguish I went through. I had to go to counseling for this. Mm -hmm. I had to get a therapist for this. This was not an easy process to to bounce back. Mm. There was a time where I wasn't eating. There was a time where I didn't care what I looked like. I gained weight, like 80 pounds, Mm. okay? This was not an easy process. So you guys don't understand how many women contact me that's in that situation. Oh yeah, I'm and they have you. no clue of how they got in it. So yeah. I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to stop the ball from rolling downhill before it even get to the bottom. I'm trying I to tell you. them now. So I, I admit it was a poor decision. I take accountability for that. I'm not. I don't know what else everybody wants me to do to smooth it out. That's what I want you to explain to me, James. And this is what, what I want you to do. What, I'm a, I'm a, can, I'm a, I can do? I can I teach you something? Sure. Yes. Will you will you will you will you will you apply it to your life? Yes, I will. I promise. Okay. I'm gonna teach you something that helped me. Okay. I learned that my stress level went down the more my middle finger went up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but everybody tells me that you know that right? That's you, like you, everybody. You did, right? <laughs> My stress level went down when my the more my middle finger went up. <laughs> All right. So what I want you to do when we get off this live tonight is I want you to go in the mirror. And I had a dude do this at a car dealership one time. This I was I was consulting at a car dealership in Longview, Texas. And this guy hadn't sold cars and he was he was broke. He wasn't making no money. We were in the back talking. And I said, Give me your phone. I said, put up your middle finger. And he did this. I said, No, I mean it. Then that joker did it again. I said, do it again. Then he did it. And all of a sudden, he's bitter. He's like, then, but for the rest of the week, he sold like five more cars in like three days. Uh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Because it comes to a certain point. Lord, and Lord, forgive me, because whoever's, you know, y'all might want to call me. But but it's come a certain point. You just got to say, fuck it. Uh, I, I, I agree. Really? And and, and, and okay. when you get to the point where you just say, F, I'm sorry, your Lord, forgive me. My children might be listening because I really don't trust like that. But you just got to come to a point where you say, I mean, and I'm serious when I mean this. Yeah. Get your certified life coaching self in the mirror before the night is over with. And you stand in front of that mirror, you give yourself some affirmations and tell you, first of all, forgive yourself and mean it. Listen to me. Okay. Don't, 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 don't. Let me talk right now. I love this is your interview, but let me talk. Don't, don't, just listen. First okay. of all, forgive yourself. You got to do that. Second of all, once you forgive yourself, put the middle fingers up and sit there and, and mean it. But it's not at you. It's at your past. It's at every hater. It's at everyone that's tried to destroy you. It's that everyone that took the ammunition that you gave them to put in that gun and they tried to shoot you with it. But guess what? Those bullets don't work no more. Because you mean it. You've forgiven yourself. Do you forgive yourself? That's why I'm working on that. Okay. So now I'm going to help you. Forgive yourself. Don't, not, it ain't working on it no more. I'm doing it. No, I'm doing it. Guess what? It's, you did it. The baby's it's because cool. Can y'all help me please? In that? I, I need know, some people. I need I'm some people saying, in the chat who will I agree feel, with me. I'm going I a whole nother so level bad. spiritually right now. But Everybody in this bad. chat that agrees with me, oh I need God. you all to pray that Sansa Ray can feel the forgiveness that she needs. I'm just, okay, so I made a mistake. I'm about to block somebody else because they're getting <laughs> on my nerves and I will block y'all's asses left. And I'm going to put you in your time out because I want to talk to you later. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. can't block everybody. Some I'm not. I just put them in time out. I'm not, I'm not. This is my channel. I ain't got but 240 <laughs> followers no way, so I'm good. I ain't got, I ain't got but 240 some followers. But I don't get no more followers. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm tell you, I, I, I'm real good. With, so uh, Melinda says she's agreement with for your uh, forgiveness. 
uh, Catherine said, you can only be responsible for you. Everybody else, everybody's not your responsibility. You can't make people be right, Sansa Ray. Um, you can't no. make people do right. Is your son financially taken care of? Yes. That's all that matters. But I just feel so bad no for him. No but. I feel so no bad but. for that's him. No but. That's a choice. That's not your choice. That's not his choice. And guess what? At 22, you see, this is the thing right here. Because you didn't have your father in your life. Now you want to make your son's father be a part of his life. It's not happening. Oh, look no. What hap no, hold on. Yeah, but look what happened when you finally oh. found your father. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't a good. Yeah. So you don't know. So it yeah. might be a good thing. Because, I That's mean, true. $12, I ain't mean, very ambitious. I don't want no ambitious men around my shit. My, you understand what I'm saying? 12, that yeah. nigga's a $12 hour type nigga. You might not want that nigga around He might child. be. I mean, I don't know. I just All right, Mike, my... you want mites and butts and <laughs> your C's and whatever. Keep on making excuses. You four years later down the road, Sansa Ray. I know. All that confidence that comes behind all those videos and how, because you articulate so well. And you get it out Thank there. Thank you. But Thank you. I'm not, I don't see a hypocrite when I hear you talk. I see a person that has lived those experiences. Now, conceptual, I mean, now feel them and mean it and put yeah, that into practice. It. And I promise you, when you forgive yourself, everything else will come together. Everything else will come together. Well, Even how if am it's... I supposed to do that? Like, how do I do that? Somebody, who, who, who can help her? Who can help her how, forgive? How who, who can help that? her? Who can help her with the process of forgiveness? I want to know. Is there a young lady? Because I'm that, that ain't my. I'm. I can do it, but I, I feel like it's another young lady in here that that can really help her with this whole restoration process and this forgiveness. Because that's what it's all about. I mean, we we've talked about it. You met a married man. You should have left. You didn't leave. Yeah, I didn't leave. You I stayed. Should've you should you should have left. You didn't. You stayed. So, but that's part. Oh, we know that part. So we've learned that lesson. I right. stayed with him. I didn't do anything wrong. I loved him. I, I left did. where I was living in a investment property and went and got in a hotel with him and eventually slept in the back of a Ford Explorer with him. I, what have you done wrong? You laid down. You could have left. Hell, I know how many, how many women, how many women in the chat would have left him when he was when the Negroes thing wouldn't get me. Well, the ED <laughs> set in. You That's stayed true. with him. Through, you stayed with him through <laughs> the so ED. True. You have done nothing oh my God. wrong. You Ladies, would, you, don't do that. Don't ever do that. Listen, listen Corey said, I know you were, weren't planning on being a single mother. Your son is a product of a situation that's out of his control. People need to know. Children produced under these circumstances have feelings too. Stop talking about, stop, about this woman's story. Stop throwing stones at her. Yes. All this stuff is going to be in the internet 20 years from now. And your job is to show your son a strong, secure mother that took care of him in spite. I want, come here, look at me. Come here. My I, son I, is in here. Let me see. Come here, baby. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> he he don't look like he's going for nothing. He looks he like he is well taken care of. <laughs> He, is. he looks like he is well taken care of. Yeah, he okay. Girl, you better get your butt in the mirror and forgive your. You ain't even got to go to the mirror. Get on your knees and forgive yourself. I'm gonna try. Mean it. I really am. I need you to. Thank you. James. I really need you to. I need you to. Listen. I'm gonna Sammy, Sma Sammy Smash says, "Just, just know this. Ain't nobody perfect. We all make mistakes. Just learn from it. Know better and do better and forgive yourself. Would you ever do that? Pro Would you ever do that again?" Would you ever mess oh, with a married no, man again? It only took one time for me to be abandoned with a child. One? That's it. I'm done with man. that one. I'm not doing that again. You ain't got to worry. You ain't okay, got somebody, to worry about me. Somebody just gave you some affirmations. This is Melissa Wood. She's a minister at my church. She said, you're awesome. You're powerful to, to smile through your pain. Call on Jesus or whoever you call for peace. Keep it moving. That's your strength. Oh, and keep, she said, give yourself flowers every week. But do whatever you Thank love you. yourself, baby. Love yourself. Love yourself. Forgive yourself first. Get in that mirror. And everybody that's talking about you on the internet, guess what? Give them a God bless you and a good old F you. Two of them because you got two middle fingers. And if you can do your toes, <laughs> do your toes too. But give them to them and move on. Do my toes. 
If you, I, can, I wish if I can make my toes make, I'll pick five. I wish I had four middle fingers because I have no stress whatsoever. <laughs> But I ain't got but two middle fingers. I ain't got but two hands. <laughs> so. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to try. Well, I'm going to do it. Cause I'm going to do this. Well, it just is a you, process. Well, won't you inbox me? Because since you know so much about her truth, I mean, I got, since you know so much about her truth, won't you inbox me? But don't do it on my show right now. Don't disrespect my show. I but think I'm, they... I'm, now, that's my, now, I'm saying that as a man partner. Don't disrespect <laughs> my show anymore. If you got something you want to say to me, there's a private box you can inbox me i i mean i'm always open for that and i appreciate you i love you well i told before. i told you they was gonna do it james yeah I know. I told you and i told you what did i tell you and what did I, when you I said that what did i tell you <laughs> what because you, you conversations a dialogue you said something i said something back what i say you basically said i got this there you go so man, <laughs> i'm not this. gonna do I ain't gonna block you like I blocked the other two Negroes that got on my nerves tonight because you said no problem. I respect that. But if you want to have a conversation, uh, hit me up. No, you're not. But you keep you're, you're changing the direction of the conversation. If you would like to inbox me, we can do a whole different show. But I but I personally don't run around handling other people's truths. That's between them. God, hey, listen. I, there's a scripture that says, "Let the wheat and the tear grow together," and God said He'll do the dividing. So if it's something that's not true, He'll handle that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't tell you I've been preaching for 28 years. I ain't tell you that part that I sound correct. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, so I'm, 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 I'm real with this. Y'all don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't play this guy. I might not ever be a social media sensation, but I'm on the side of right. And I and, and that's what I am. And, and and you know what? I ain't gonna lie, I've, I've been in that situation that you're talking about. The same situation that you're going through and that you've lived through. I've been through that situation. So uh well, let me, me just say this. Let me just say this before I go. Okay. There is nothing anyone can tell you about me that I haven't already said about myself. So what's the problem with forgiving yourself then? I've already exposed <laughs> myself. I don't know why that's so hard. It's just difficult. Yeah. That no one can tell you something about me that I haven't already said. Gotcha. So if somebody's coming to anybody telling you what my truth is to them and their perspective, that's some lie that they told themselves or their way of trying to twist something so yeah. I, I just i just want everybody to gather up as much, much information as you can before you make sound judgment about who i am as a person like yeah. find out who i am from me not yeah. everybody else's perspective of who i am that's yeah, all i, I just want people to do can you give that's me a high it. five can, you, can i get an air high five from the to west coast two. bam good air bam. Five. <laughs> and let me tell you something give me say something don't no real man put no woman in no hotel and make her sleep in the back of a dog going forward explore. No way, nigga. Thank I'm sorry, you. my man. I gotta be saved. I don't say. Don't let nobody don't take you. Listen, to yeah. you falling victim to the trolls too. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't I'm do a, it. I like it. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm an introvert. So I, I don't. I can do this all day long. As long as, as, long as I can get some followers behind it. Yeah, but that's all good. Hey, y'all. This has been a real conversation, Sansa Ray. I appreciate you for coming Thank in. You. I pray that uh you were blessed by the conversation i hope that everything uh i, 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 I think it, i think it went well i think it went, I well. Think it went well too i, think I just want to well. help somebody i want to help whoever's listening just know you can get out of whatever situation you are in financially whatever emotionally you can forgive yourself i'm trying we human mm -hmm. you know yeah. it's a process and do me one other favor though like court like uh catherine said don't respond to nobody that don't have a profile picture all right. <laughs> right. Hey, Thank you. Okay. My dad don't let me do something. All right, but uh, it's been good. You can go back and read these comments because some of them will be encouraging. Some are going to try you a little bit, but some of them will be encouraging. And uh, and that's a good thing because my people right. think. They're they thinkers. Do. Like they I told do. you, I a like lot of people that you run across, they don't, they're not thinkers. Uh, but my people in my, they, they're going to be thinkers. And we're not going to ostracize. I knew that when you came over here. So. I hope you get some good content off of this. Uh, it's been good for me. I appreciate you. I hope we stay in contact with one another. Oh, we will. We will. But I tell people this all the time whenever I get off my show. And I hope, Warren, I hope you and all your partners get this as well. The world is changing. But my question is, why do you remain the same? Y'all have a good night. And I appreciate you. God bless you.